Good evening, everybody. I'm Lisa Salver. I'm the founder and CEO of the Hypertrophic Cardiomyopathy Association. It is July 18th at about 8 p.m. Eastern time. I uh, just finished up with a board meeting and I'm heading off to vacation, but I wanted to share some information with you before I take off because we've received a very special delivery this week here at the HCMA. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. So as many of you know, or some of you may not, I am the recipient of a heart transplant, which occurred on uh, February, 7th, uh, February 2nd, 2017. And as part of my deal to get a heart transplant, I thought it would be very important to save my heart uh, through science, something called plastinization, which I'll explain in a minute. And I saved my heart to be used as a teaching tool to help people understand what hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is, how somebody can look so normal on the outside and have a very diseased heart. Now, I did this on my personal Facebook page yesterday by mistake. I meant to do it in our closed group, but I thought uh, before I head off for vacation that I would share it with our global HCM community because it's kind of neat. Um, so I'm going to start by showing you my plastinized heart, which I've had now for about a year and a half um, back from the lab. And I have three new hearts here that I'm going to show you. What's absolutely astounding about what I'm about to show you is this is all the same disease. And as we go through this, you're going to see that these hearts don't really look the same but it's all the same root cause that caused HCM. And in part, what I'm about to show you is part of the reason why the HCMA believes so strongly in high volume center of excellence care for those with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna start showing you some anatomic pictures of the heart. Oh, hello, one of my nurses is here. Hi, honey, look, the scar is all good. Um, so, so nice to see you. So now you can see why I landed in your care to begin with. So this is my heart and I'm sorry that the video is not fantastic, but it's going to be good. So this is my hypertrophic cardiomyopathy heart. And if you've ever looked at an echocardiogram, this is pretty much the view you get. All right. So I'm going to walk you through the anatomy of the heart and I'm sorry if I keep turning it around. This is your septum, this big piece here. My septum was two times or actually three times larger than it should be. So this muscle should be about a centimeter. It's about three centimeters here. And if you look closely, you see the marbling, the white stuff inside of that muscle. That's called scarring. Scarring is bad. These little pieces here are your papillary muscles. And papillary muscles are a normal part of your heart anatomy. Most people don't talk about them much but mine are scarred in. This is my mitral valve. You've all heard about mitral valves before. This is an actual mitral valve cut in half. This is the atria. This is the aorta over here, the aortic valve, and then it comes out to the aorta. And this little notch over here is the right ventricle. Okay, so that's what one heart, this happens to have been my heart, looks like. Now you've all heard people talk about your heart's the size of your fist. Now, some people think that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is this huge heart. Look, fist, heart. Actually, it's missing a little piece, so you can see the right ventricle. But they're pretty much the same size, but mine is just very dense, very muscle-bound. So that is my heart. Now I'm going to show you a couple of other hearts. They have names, and I will tell you the names of all of them. And I'm going to start with one that looks... Um, a little bit more like mine. This is Amy's heart we're going to see next. Um, Amy had a transplant last September and she's doing very well today. And this is, I'm going to take the whole heart. Now Amy's a little taller than I am. And this is Amy's heart. So Amy's heart is about the size of a fist. Again. So I'm going to put the little right ventricle side down. And here's your echo view again. So see how thick that cavity is as well. She's about two centimeters in the septum here, and she's got hypertrophy down around the outside, and here looks a little thick too. 
but it's a very small cavity. And her right ventricle is a little bit bigger than mine was. Um, the hearts do kind of compress when they uh, get shipped. So this was probably not the actual shape. It's a little smushed, but that's Amy's heart. And again, side to side, thick, not a lot of room for blood in that cavity. And that would be Amy's HCM heart. Now I'm gonna take my heart and I'm gonna put them next to each other. In just a second here, sorry about the, the wonky view. So these are the same disease. The shape is very, very different, isn't it? So you have a Lisa heart, you have an Amy heart. Now we're going to do Irene's heart. And this is a very, 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 very special heart. And the reason I say that is Irene was um, a longtime client of the HCMA. She contacted us about 12, 11, 12 years ago, uh, right before she had a myectomy. So she had the open heart procedure to take out the obstruction. Unfortunately, she developed more disease and got sicker and she needed a transplant. So we talked again. She went to the same program that I went to at Newark Beth Israel for her transplant. Um, sadly, the donor heart did not start. This is a rare occurrence in transplant, unfortunately a known risk. So Irene did not survive her transplant, but she was a teacher and it was very important to her and to her mother who has recently passed away as well from cancer, um, that the heart be preserved and that it be used as a teaching tool. So this is Irene's heart. Okay, now you see it's again thick, but her papillary muscles over here are just so large, they take up the whole ventricle, okay? So there was no space in that heart, and you can also see some marbling and scarring, more so on this side. Um, so when you are diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, um, we do uh, cardiac MRIs to look inside the heart, and one of the things that we're looking for is scarring or fibrosis, and it's not the more scar in a heart, the you know, worse the disease actually is. And you can see in all of these hearts, there's a varying degree of scarring. I'm gonna pop back to Amy's heart again. Look at the scarring and the striation through that muscle. This muscle should all be one color. It shouldn't be marbled. Okay, so that's heart number two. Now I'm gonna throw you a loop here because heart number, actually that was heart number three. Heart number four is Hannah's heart. Now Hannah, a young lady from Florida, um, first contacted the HCMA a few years back and she had a very traditional HCM and then her ejection fraction dropped a bit and she went to a specialist and that specialist said, you really need to get listed for a transplant. And she said, okay, I'll go home and do it. And a program in her home state of Florida said, oh no, you can last a little bit longer. She contacted us, we got her to a specialist uh, in Florida that understood HCM a little bit better than where she was at, and she did get listed for her heart transplant. Her heart actually moved into what's called the dilated phase, so a burnt out HCM. Look how cavernous that ventricle is, and how um, the, the walls have gotten thinner. I'm gonna give you that echo view, I wanna just use the same side here. So this is, if you're looking at an echocardiogram, this would be, you know, your septum up here, your cavity, your, your mitral valve here. Everything here is kind of bubbled out and enlarged. So when we talk about end stage or burnt out hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, this is what happens. In all honesty, her heart probably looked more like mine or Amy's or Irene's before her heart dilated out and became um, a very low ejection fraction. She, her ejection fraction, I believe, got down to about 20. Now, my ejection fraction was pre preserved at about 50. Amy was about 50, and Irene was about 50. So it doesn't just mean, you know, a low ejection fraction isn't the sign for transplant. It's severe diastolic dysfunction. It's low output heart failure. It's a very different mechanism of failure that leads people with HCM to go to transplant than your typical dilated out somebody's had a number of heart attacks and the muscles just too weak, kind of heart failure. Important to know that only three to 5% of people with HCM will ever even need to be worked up for a transplant. We are the oddity in the, in the HCM community. It's not very common that you need a transplant, but these amazing people 
have donated their hearts so that you can learn and that the world can learn what HCM actually is. Because when you see somebody talking to you, you don't stop and think, I wonder what the chambers of their heart looks like or how thick the walls of their heart are. And now we have an ability to see that, to show it, to teach that these hearts, while they have the same disease, are all a little bit different. And that is why it is so important that patients with HCM go to high volume care models that understand that this kind of a heart may function differently than a different kind of HCM may function. And that the treatment pathways for different anatomies may vary greatly. This is one of the major reasons why the HCMA supports the concept of Center of Excellence Care. So um, I'm very happy to say that this week we added a new program to our HCMA recognized Center of Excellence Care model, and that is St. Thomas is in Nashville, Tennessee. So Tennessee, you're on the map now. Um, I've had visits to Southern California in the past couple weeks and to Wisconsin. So we have new programs joining the HCMA family and we're really excited to have them so that they can treat all of these hearts. And if there is a need for transplant, that um, people can get there in a timely manner. Now, I know that there's some of you that may say, hey, I'm on a transplant pathway and I might wanna save my heart too. Well, the HCMA will accept your donation of your transplanted heart and we can arrange to have it plastinized and we can use it for a teaching tool. It can't be returned to you, I'm sorry. This is a lot of work to actually make this happen. And I wanna give my sincere thanks to Dr. Carlos Batista for assisting us in this process. And a huge thanks to Dr. Bill Roberts for doing something that is an absolute art form. And that is to actually section the hearts in this manner. You can look at previous videos on this page where I was present with Dr. Roberts when he opened up each of these hearts and talked us through the anatomy before they became plastinized. So this is amazing technology that allows you to truly examine and hold, I don't have to have gloves on, these are human hearts, they are dehydrated and they are rehydrated with a plastic resin that actually preserves the heart forever in plastic. So you will, if you see me out giving a talk somewhere or you come to one of our conferences, I will not have them out like this in public. They'll be in plastic bags just to preserve them and so they don't get dirty and so they don't break. But they will last forever and we will take really good care of them. They're gonna get a really cool new home in a nice big box so people can open it up and, and learn about HCM right there. So um, that's what I wanted to tell you before I head off for vacation next week. Um, I'm just thrilled that we have this amazing opportunity to teach you with. I'm absolutely beyond grateful to all of those who have given their hearts, Hannah, Amy, and Irene, and to Irene's family who has survived her and her and Irene's mom. Um, I've been in communication with them. Thank you so much for you know being supportive of Irene's wishes to want to educate people. We think it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you today. So if you might be looking at transplant and want to plastinize your heart, contact the HCMA office. Our contact information is on the HCMA page. And uh, you can go to our website and get the contact information there as well for hcm.org. And we will help you with the process. Um, it's, it's a complicated process because we have to get your transplant center to sign off and agree to, to give you back the heart. We will help arrange transportation of the heart to the plastinization lab and to um, there's some there's some steps involved there because the plastinization lab is in Toledo. The heart has to be sectioned in Dallas and my office is in New Jersey. So there's some logistics that we have to do to make it all happen. But we've done it four times now and it's worked really well. And now you have this educational opportunity. What better way? to pay it forward and thank our donor families and thank our amazing transplant teams and our amazing HCM teams that got us to this point than to use our hearts to educate and teach others. So there you go. Have a great day and uh, keep your hearts healthy. Bye-bye.